is Tuesday, the 8th of January. Again, I'm going to start. What we're going to end up doing now is going over chapters in your book. It's chapters 11 and 12. All right. And we're going to, uh, as we have been doing, learn kind of by writing a program. So chapter 11, which starts on page 739 in the book, is on GUI applications 1. Chapter 12 is on GUI applications 2. My suggestion to you is that you just kind of flip through the pages, not right this second maybe, but spend no more than 15 minutes or so on each chapter. What you're going to find is when we start doing this the other way, so to speak, it's going to be much easier and I think it'll make much more sense because we'll be using the tools. In this um, chapter, we're going to be building this conference app that I told you about. But what I wanted to mention was at the end of the chapter for chapter 11, they build apps throughout the chapter as always, but at the end of the chapter, and it starts all the way on page, yeah, if I can find it, starts on page 813, and it goes all the way through page 826, so it's about 15 pages. They do this Brandy's Bagel application. All right, this is what I want to mention to you, okay? Because this, what I'm about to say right now, it's all new, okay? This right here, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when you run, but it basically looks just like this. This is what's called a border layout. So imagine that you took your screen and you divided your screen into one, two, three, four, five areas. So there's your north up on the top. There's your south down on the bottom, all right, your west, your east, and your center, all right? Now, for those watching it otherwise, right here, forget this is just the title right there, but where it says, Welcome to Brandy's Bagel House, that's in the north area, all right? Where it's got the bagel, that's in the west area. Where it's got coffee, that's in the east area, all right? Where it's got toppings, that's in the center area. Technically, there's nothing in the south area. I know you see those buttons, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. All right, because the way that we build this is we, and for this program, it, 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 and the code's out there already. You actually create one class to just create this, one class for this, one class for this, one class for this, and then another class to basically put everything together. All right, and I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but look at it this way. It's a very simplistic application. You can only buy one bagel at a time the way this is set up. I know that that's, that's kind of contrived, but that's not what's important here. And the idea is, by default, you'll notice that you get a, a, a white bagel and you get a regular coffee. Each one of these things also has a cost associated with it. I think this is White bagels are a buck and a quarter, whole wheat are a buck fifty. The toppings each have their own costs. Cream cheese is fifty cents, butter is twenty-five cents, peach jelly and blueberry jam are each seventy-five cents. Coffee, none of course would be none. I believe regular decaf are like a dollar and a quarter and cappuccino is two bucks. So you can just imagine that if you came through here and the way it is, so that would be one and a quarter, that's nothing, and that would be one and a quarter. So if I click calculate right now, it would say your total is 250. Then over and above that, it puts a 6% tax on it, which would, you know, to me would break out to about 15 cents. So your total would be 265. Does that make sense? But the idea and what's new is that's gooey. All right, and the stuff we've done in the past has not been gooey. If you follow the steps that they show in here, you don't have to do this. I'm not assigning it. But if you say, well, I, I, you know, would it help me understand? Probably. But I just want to show you. Here, here it is, because I went and did it, and I literally started from scratch. I did not copy a thing in. Nothing. And the one that's the order calculator GUI, this is the one that runs the program. So run, run. So you can see it looks virtually identical to what you just saw in the book. And again, white bagel, regular coffee, click calculate. 250, 15 cents tax, 265. And you can do go through all the different permutations in here that you want. I tried a bunch of them yesterday and they work just fine. But the key the key point is 
this is the first time everything that we've done previously in here for GUI has been creating an option dialog or a message dialog. Now we're talking about having radio buttons, check boxes, and actual buttons that we'll put in there, and we will, we will put some code behind them. Now, most people, when you think about it, when you think about, well, you had a, a click event for a button, you know, and that's where you're going to put your code. Java doesn't actually recognize what we call a click event. All right? What it recognizes rather than a click event is something called an action performed method. That's where you put your code. All right? But it's not even that smart. When you write code in the way that we're going to write it for this one, all right, you have to put a lot of stuff in there because by default the software is really, really dumb. All right, so we're going to go and put a bunch of stuff in there ourselves. It's not even smart enough that it knows to, to by default, it doesn't even know when you click there to exit. All right, it doesn't know much of anything. All right. So I'm going to exit, boom. And I don't need this one anymore. I, this is the one that we're going to create. And again, I've created that one also, but I want to show you what that one's going to look like. All right, so this is conference application and the one that we want I guess uh, I don't know what I changed on there conference registration I think that's the one that we run so this is what we're doing this is the one we're gonna build as a class right now alright so for instance if you come in there and you say well we're students and we want to go to uh, enter e commerce that sounds pretty good uh, future of the web well, that sounds pretty good. I don't know what that advanced Java programming one, but we'll take that one too. Uh, no one cares about security. And <laughs> dinner and a keynote speech. So we put all that stuff in there and we click calculate charges and hopefully you can see that it's similar in nature. In other words, each one of these things that you see here has a charge associated with it. So you'll notice it was 1510. If I don't want to go to dinner, it's now 1480. All right. If I decide, well, I only have money, you know, I, I, again, I'm getting closer to the amount of money I have, but I don't have money to go to, to that. I, yeah, I can go to the advanced Java one. That's about it. See how it keeps going down every time? So, again, there are, uh, there are costs associated with each one of these. Now, what I've done, you don't have to do it, but what I've done is I copied the um, comments that the system, you know, that the basically that the book gave, gave. I went and copied them. So, again, Create a GUI app that calculates and displays the total travel expenses of a business person on a trip. Here's the information a user must, must provide. All right. How many days you're going on a trip, what's your airfare, et cetera, all this other good stuff. All right. So, and then you've got some different, different kinds of things. So we're going to get into all this stuff in just a couple minutes. All right. But some of the stuff in here is going to be brand new. For instance, extends JFrame. We've never talked about that before. We're going to be extending panels and we're going to be extending frames. And I'm going to go through it, but very quickly. So to fill in the blanks, I'm going to ask that you at least, like I said, page through chapter 11 and page through chapter 12. All right. So we're going to build this between now and Thursday because we got off to a late start today, but we're going to build it and we're going to build it this way where we're actually this, we're coding in our button right there so we're gonna do all that stuff then we'll, we'll finish this we won't finish it today but we hopefully will finish it maybe an hour into Thursday we'll see then we'll go back and we'll create the same app but we'll create it using the GUI tools that are provided we're literally you can just sit there and drag stuff out on the screen like you're used to doing and the reason you so say you might say well why don't we just do it like that to begin with because there's a hell of a lot of code out there that was written like this there's a lot of code that's still out there. So you have to understand how to, how to look at this code and be able to write this code before you go in and start doing the other stuff. All right? So I asked you, and hopefully everybody's done this, I asked everybody to get into, um, get into Eclipse and create a new project. All right? I said you can call the new project Conference. All right? And then, of course, create your... Um, package and we're, we're going to start by just creating one class under there that we're calling registration panel so if you could all do that right now 
Okay. So again, the program that we're actually doing right here is at the end of chapter 12. And it is program... thought it was 12. Yep, conference registration system. That's program 8. I think I've got the wrong comments now that I'm looking at it. But that's fine. Create an app that uses the registration fees for a conference. The general conference registration fee is $895 a person. Students registration is $495 a person. There's an optional opening night dinner for $30 a person. And there are different workshops. This is all at the bottom of page 905 in your book. All right, so I think I, what I did was this morning I tried cleaning some stuff up. And I think I threw away the right comments and kept the wrong ones. But that's okay. All right. So hopefully your screen looks something like this. Again, th this is, these are wrong comments, I think. At least some of them are. No, oh, that's right. E95. Okay, that looks good. All right. So hopefully you've got all this stuff. Don't worry about the comment. Like I said, right now it would be nice to add it eventually. But we've got the registration panel. Okay? All right. So <clears throat> let's just begin then. I'm not going to put any import statements in as we start to add stuff and the system can't find it and it gives me an error. I'm going to use the IntelliSense that's built into Eclipse to add the stuff for me. All right. The first thing that we want to do is this is going to be a panel. All right. And a panel is something that can exist on a screen. So literally, it's going to be like a holding area, okay, where you can put, you can put some of your controls in there. All right. And we're going to say that what this does is it extends JPanel. All right, so you have to add this first. And you'll notice immediately once we do, it's giving me an error. All right, so it says I have to import JPanel. So I'm going to import that, and boom, that error goes away. What you're going to notice, we're, I'm, I'm having you use the newer tools. There's two types of tools that exist in Java, just so you know. There's two types. There's tools that, that, that say AWT, and that stands for Abstract Window Toolkit. Those are the older type of tools, and they're swing tools. All right? And that's why last semester I kept saying swing all the time when I meant to say Swift. But swing tools were written to be basically platform agnostic. In other words, swing applications should look virtually the same whether you, you run it on a Mac or on an Intel machine or on a Linux-based machine, etc., they should look virtually the same. AWT tools, the Abstract Window Toolkit, the older tools, they have a tendency to look very different on different kinds of um, on different kinds of platforms. All right, Java didn't make a total switch, so what you're going to see in some of this stuff is is occasionally rather than importing a Java X. So when you use swing, it's not Java dot, it's Java X dot swing. We, we may still be importing uh, Java dot AWT dot star. And that's just the way that they ended up writing the language. You know, again, when people say, well, why did they do that? I, you know, the J in my first name doesn't stand for Java. I, I honestly, I'm not trying to be a smart ass. I don't know. Some of the, these, the things that they decided to do, I'm not sure why they decided to do them. All right. So to register, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create some constants. You know the constants, they're private, they're going to be final. These are all going to be doubles. And there's going to be three of them. So even though I'm going to get errors after doing this, I don't care. I'm more concerned with getting these done as fast as we can here.
Now, if I was a good little soldier, I would be making comments for all these, but does everybody understand if you're a student, that's your cost. If you're a non-student, that's your cost. And if you want to go hear the keynote speaker, which is with dinner, that's your cost. Does that make sense to everyone? Does it also make sense to you that you're going to register, you're either going to be a non-student or a student? Does that make sense for everyone? So we're going to have two radio buttons, one that'll say basically not or student and one that'll say general or something on it. But you'll notice they're underlined because, again, I have to go in and I have to import another class. It's even kind of nice when you let the system do it for you like this. It puts it in alphabetic order where you may or may not put it in alphabetic order yourselves. All right, so there's our first variables. We're going to have three more. Of course, you have to spell private right. That'll help. There we go. And notice, again, I have to add the checkbox. So I've now put in these three things up here. You don't have to key those in. These panels are just holders, for lack of better words. So this panel that's right here, that's going to hold those two radio buttons that you see right here. This panel that's right here, that's going to hold this checkbox. All right. If you're a good Java programmer, I'm asking you right this right now, seriously, if you're a good Java programmer, what what method do you always add to each class that you that you create? Thank you. I hate when I have to say it rhymes with Bunstructor. I just hate that. Remember that the name of our class is Registration Panel. So that also has to be the name of our constructor. Now, again, I'd like to get through as much of this today as we can. I realize some of you type faster than others do. And I, you know, there's, I'll do what I can here. But that said, I, like I said, I want us to get as much done as we can. So I'm taking everybody's, for granted, everybody's got that part in blue done. All right, so I can just move, put a little more room in here. And I can start writing the constructor. Anybody have any idea why those are in red? Because we didn't make them yet. That's not one that you can click on here and say, okay, Eclipse, fix that for me. It will create a blank method for you. All right. We don't we don't even want that. We'll do it ourselves later. All right, so that's building our panels. <clears throat> Notice again, when you look on here, it says it doesn't understand grid. Another thing that has to be imported. 
Please look up on the screen right now. All right. Notice what I've got up here. Java X swing, Java X swing, Java X swing. Notice this one. The layout stuff, they didn't upgrade. So that one is this. That's still from the old AWT because it hasn't been upgraded for swing. So we're combining the use of abstract window toolkit components with swing components. That's the way it's normally done. All right. And that's it for the constructor. So if you, if you look up on the screen right here, if you can imagine what we've done so far is we've created two panels. And we haven't even decided yet where they're going on the screen. But if you can imagine, we're going to have something over here someplace that's going to look like this. There'll be a dot there, and it'll say, for example, general. And there'll be a dot there, and it'll say, like, student. All right, then someplace else, maybe over here. We don't know yet. There's going to be a checkbox that's going to say Keynote. So all that code that we put in there for our constructor is going to allow us to build the panel that's going to hold this and to build the panel that's going to hold that. Does that make sense to people? If you create it by hand, so to speak, which is what we're doing in this example, you must do it this way. All right, so what we've got left is we've got to build the radio panel, and we've got to build the checkbox panel. And then once we built these two panels, and panels are invisible, just so you know, you don't see them unless you tell them that you want them to appear. Basically, they're invisible. They're holders. But now think about this. Look up on the screen here. What we want to have happen eventually is what we do here is going to be part of a bigger thing. Because this just has registration stuff. Then over here, we're going to have, remember those things? Do you, want to add, do you want to go to the one on network security? Do you want to go to whatever? And then down at the bottom, we're going to have a button here that says calculate and a button here that says exit. So we're going to have to add the code in here that says if that one's checked, then, then we want to add $495 to our whole cost. If that one's checked, we want to add $895 to our whole cost. And if that one is checked, we want to add $30 to our entire cost. Does all that make sense? Those are all things that you have to, you know, wear into the system. All right. <clears throat> so again, the next one we're writing here And somebody tell me, this is all stuff that you should know. This is the kind of the question I'm asking you right now is the kind of question you might get asked at a job interview. All right? And the question, that question is, why is this thing private? No, that's why it's void. Well, why is it private? What's that? That you, only, you want to guarantee that it's only going to be accessed in this class. Thank you. All right, now we're going to create the radio buttons. And this is how you create radio buttons. So that's creating these two things right here. All right. Now you can't, what I want to be able to do is I want you to only be able to click one of these. All right. The way that I do that is I have to put those into what's called a radio button group. 
The system doesn't know that they're connected with one another right now. All right? You know, if you remember, we do that kind of thing in HTML by giving them the same name. And then we, we change the IDs. We don't have anything like that here. All right? So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a button group that's going to hold our buttons. Or a button group for our radio buttons. <clears throat> and again, you'll notice how I get the underline because it's yet something else that we have to add from Java X Swing. All right, so that fixed that. Notice too, if you look up on the screen, please, that one's not underlined anymore because we started to build it. As soon as we start to build the next one, all that will go away, the underline that's there. All right? Now that we've created the button group, now we have to add radio buttons to the button group. And mercifully, that is the end of this routine. So think about all the steps that are involved in this. All right? We first come in and we say create the two radio buttons. So they're kind of in limbo. So then we create a group so we're able to use them as though they're one entity, all right? After we create the group, we have to add the buttons to the group. But now they're added to the group, but the group is kind of like in an island of, of it itself. So we create a panel. This is like a group box that you've seen in C Sharp, all right? And then we add those two buttons to our group box. All right, they're already in our button group, but now we're adding them to our panel. And then we give it this. So it's pretty much what I showed you up here. The only thing that's different is now up here, we're going to have like a little legend up here that's going to say registration type on the top. So we've got to do something similar now. And we've got to add another routine that's going to be very similar to this one, but it's shorter because we only have the one, all right, we only have the one um, checkbox. 
All right, so literally, that, that's going to be about three lines long. Okay? We do that, and then we're going to have to add a, a method to get our cost, and that's four or five lines long. All right, even if we only get that far today, that's fine. All right, then we'll just continue on next time. So hopefully everybody's been able to catch up while I do a little talking in between here. But I, I'm going to finish. We'll be done in about five minutes. Then if you need me to slide this up or slide this down, I can do it. You're not going to be able to run this because there's no main in it. Okay. And magically, again, what's still underlined here? That's the one that was, but now that I've got it down here, it no longer is. Like I said, literally. I can't say if I want here. Probably it'd help if you spelled keynote right too, but that's that whole routine right there. Like I said, we've got one more to add that's not much bigger than this one. Alright, can somebody, without me putting my mouse over it, can you look up on the screen here? See where it says private, private double get registration cost? Can you see how that's in red? Why is that in red? Well, you're, you're in the right line. We haven't returned anything. We, we're saying we're returning a double. So at the end, when we get all done, we are going to return the total. So I can't put that down here if I want. If I type in now return total, now it goes away. All right, right now it would just return 0, 0.0, which doesn't make one much sense. Actually, well, we can say plus equals, that's fine. Almost done. Three more lines. But does this make sense that this we're asking in English? We're saying if general is the one that's highlighted, add that $895 to our total. Otherwise, it's got to be student because we're making you add one or the other. You have to add one or the other. If you're going to register, you know, you'd have to register as a student or as a general, non-student. All right. So what's the only thing we haven't talked about yet in this section? What, what's missing from there? We've covered these two. What haven't we covered? How about that one? If that's checked, then we want to add 30 more onto our total. But we're using constants in here. So again, we're going to say if keynote dot again is selected. Notice that it's is selected whether you're using a uh, 
whether you're using a checkbox or a radio button. And that's the first of our three. Again, there's not much you can do with this right now. The next one that we're going to do is we're going to add the thing for the, over here for those conferences. That will be shorter than the one we just did. Then we're going to have to add something that's going to allow us to basically bring this all onto one screen, place this in one area, this in one area, this in one area, etc. So we're going to want to do all that stuff. So that again, that when we get done, and I showed it to you before, but I am going to show it again. So this is what we're, what we're shooting for. So what we've done so far is just this. The registration type, so that's that one panel. Remember, we gave it a name. Dinner and keynote, we didn't give it a name. All right. So that's what we've got done so far is this. The next one we have to add are the workshops, which are right here. Plus, we want to make sure that when we're setting, up, setting it up for the workshops, and it doesn't sound like it's a big thing, but there's three ways. We can set it up so you can only click one of these. And that's called single interval. All right, we can set it up so you can click more than one, but they have to be contiguous. I think that's like continual interval or something like that. Or we can set it up the way we'll have it, where they don't have to be contiguous. That's typically what you'd want. But again, what, what's going to dictate that is exactly what it is, all right, you're working with. Now, if I click Calculate Charges, notice it still gives me 1480. All right? But you're not registered, so we'd have to put some more code in there to check for that. Does that make sense? All right? Because I don't believe they'd let you go to the workshops if you weren't registered. And you can, you can always turn around. Well, they, they didn't say any of that kind of stuff in the specs. Well, just in the same way, when you actually, be, when you're out there and you're a programmer, a lot of times you're going to have specs that that are that you're that you'll be given that suck. And what's really, I'll tell you the truth. What's really tough about that is if you go back to the end user and you say, "Do you want this?" I can vir virtually guarantee you, they'll never say no. Oh, of course we did. Oh wow, wish we would have thought of that. But that's they're not going to say that to you. All right. So what, one of the things as a developer you must oft times be sure of is that you talk with your, with your people who might be your analysts because those may very well be the people who are in touch with the end user. As a programmer, you're probably not going to have a lot of interplay with end users. But you can ask them that question. Hey, they didn't say they wanted any kind of error checking here. Should I put some in or am I just supposed to assume that the person who's running this has a clue? All right. Because, like I said, again, if you ask somebody, do you want it, they're going to, I can tell you, literally 100% of the time, yes, of course we did. All right, so next time we'll add, so this was the registration. So the next time we'll add the workshop panel, then we'll add another one that will put everything together. All right? Your next assignment, because I know you guys, when you did it before, I think you did this one for me, you, you know it, you love it. It's going to be Joe's Automotive that you're going to do, and you're going to do it gooey. And it should be one that everybody is familiar with, and that's why I picked that. All right, so hopefully we can get done with this in the first hour of class on Thursday. Then in the second hour, we'll start building this where you can just do some drag and drop. All right, so we're going to rebuild the whole project again. Questions? What's due on Friday? What's due on Friday? I, I don't know. I wasn't sure. If Whatever is that? Is that when the first assignment was due? Yeah. Okay. All you're supposed to do again for that that assignment is to add. You should already have the bank account and savings account, and they should work. All right. So you just have to add some exception handling to that. But I want the whole thing basically turned in together so I can run it. Don't just give me some exceptions. Yeah. All right. Other questions. All right, this afternoon I'm going to do the same kind of thing I did this morning in that I've already built the ASP.NET 
thing where it, uh, it, it does the, it calculates for you the monthly payment. And I think we looked at it already, but we're gonna look at it again in PHP. Literally, that lecture this morning was six minutes and 37 seconds. And I'm gonna try to cut it down. So I can be five minutes or less in each class. So both of those classes for the rest of the period after that will be lab, all right? C, hoping that's gonna be lab, no talk, no nothing on Thursday. And then two afternoon classes, same thing. That is the top, but I before I do that, I just want to I want to stop taping, so